All right, let's look at these uh, translation stuff, okay? This is a type of transformation. So a transformation means that we're going to take something and transform it. Sometimes it will look like something completely different, kind of. Other times it will not. It will look exactly the same. It just will be in a different place, all right? Uh, now, these other three terms we need to go over. We've got a pre-image, an image, and a translation is a type of transformation, all right? Now, this image and pre-image stuff is something you need to understand because we're going to be mentioning it a lot when we talk about two different figures, all right? So let's take a look at an example. So we're going to be dealing with these grids quite a bit like this, all right? So uh, what we really need as well is to get a shape on here. All right, so here we have this star, and uh, this is what we would consider to be the pre-image. Now this is the pre-image because we haven't done anything to the star just yet, okay? Now we're, we will be transforming it. In this specific case, we're going to translate it. So in other words, we're going to take this and we're going to move it somewhere else. So let's go ahead and take that star and move it, all right? So let's say, and we're going to put it, uh, sure, right here, all right? Now one thing we want to look at is uh, the size of these stars, and we could measure them if they want, but uh, really all I've done is duplicated that star and moved it, all right? So since it's the same star, it's just moved, uh, we've, tr we've transformed it, which tells us now that this is our image, okay? In other words, this star here is the one that we started with, this star here is the one that we end with. Uh, it's kind of like looking in a mirror. This would be the original. This would be the reflection of the original in the mirror, okay? It's an image in the mirror that you see when you look into the mirror. So uh, this is the image. This is the pre-image. Now, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some notational stuff, okay? So we can see of all these that there's a very distinct point right here, okay? And that point is at uh, negative six, eight. And that point is moved now to right here. And that point is five, five. So hopefully you remember how to write these coordinate pairs. Uh, now with the notational stuff with this, is for example, this point right here, we would want to name, maybe we want to name it point A. The image, okay, because it's that point that it's moved, it's still point A, but it's moved, so we just give it a mark up here. And that mark tells us that it's been moved once, that gives us one image. And as it turns out, I can continue to uh, take this image and I can find an image of that image. So in other words, I can take this image and I can make an image of that image, all right? So let's go ahead and just put it, and uh, yeah, we can put it right here, all right? So now I have this point here. Now this is still an image. It's an image of the image, so that would still be point A, but it's been moved not just once, but twice now, okay? So notice the notational difference. This shows us that it was moved once. This shows us that it was moved twice. So it's important for you to understand the difference between an image and a pre-image. And yes, this is an image that is also an image, okay? And if we wanted to, we could call this a pre-image of this image, okay? However, the mark tells us, this mark here, tells us that it was already moved once. All right, so a translation, uh, it just means that we're going to move. So we're going to take the exact same shape and we're going to move uh, an, an object, okay? Now it's important for you to know that nothing else changes other than where it is. 
So you can see in this example that the book gives, it starts with this triangle, and then it just moved to that same triangle over here. So why does that make these two different? Well, you can see not only did it move this triangle here, but it looks like it kind of rotated it or flipped it or however you want to look at that, uh, which means that it wasn't just translated. It wasn't just moved. All right, in this example, what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is describe the motion involved in moving A to A prime. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. All right, so this is A, this is A prime, and you can see all that has happened here is that this shape has moved to the right and then down. Okay, so we could say it was moved to the right one and then down one or whatever, okay, one full shape. On the other hand, and this would give you the same answer, it has also been moved down one and then to the right one shape as well, okay? Uh, both of those, it's going to give you the same answer. It's the same thing. Uh, the order is just different, and in this case, the order does not matter. All right, so the second part of this question asked if uh, how this is moved, all right? So uh, the shape has not changed at all, okay? It's still the same shape. Its orientation has not ch changed, meaning it has not been rotated. Um, and also the size is still the same, okay? So we've described all three of those, and that's all that was asking for there. All right, so translation in the coordinate plane, all right? So uh, it's important for you to realize that the lines in this really don't make a huge difference. What does make a difference are the points, okay? Now remember, once again, this was going to give us a congruent figure, meaning the angles are the same and the side lengths are the same, all right? The only thing that's changing is the position. We're moving uh, a point and we're moving it somewhere else. All right, as you can see in this example, it starts with this point A, then it moves it to A prime, so it's been translated down and then to the left as well. All right, so let's look at this example. Let's start with first, with just point J, all right? So we've got point J, it's at negative 3. So there's negative 3, and it's up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is right here. So this gives us point J. And let's look at the translation of point J. As it turns out, we're going to translate these all the same way as well, okay? So we're going to take it two units to the right. So let's look at where that would be. It's going to be two to the right. So it'll be on this line. And then it's also going to translate five units down. So let's go down five units. Okay, so that puts us right there, and this point right here is going to be J prime, okay? And again, it's J prime because it's the image of J. It's the, J is the pre-image. J prime, that's what we call this little mark here, prime. J prime is the image. All right, the next point, K. So point K is at 1, 3. And again, we're just going to take point K and we're going to translate it 2 to the right. So that takes us over here to this line. And then we're going to move it down 5 units. So let's go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units right here. And this would give us K prime. Finally, let's go ahead and graph point L, which is at negative 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 1. So there's point L, which is the image. And then we're going to translate it 2 to the right, and then 5 down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down. So this would be L prime. 
So the last thing I'm going to do here is going, I will go ahead and connect these points. And that will show us the two triangles. Now, it's important for you to remember, we need to graph, or we need to connect the points that are the pre-images, and then we'll connect the points that are the images. So first I'll start with the originals. I've got J, K, and L. Notice there's no marks here. All right, so let's go ahead and connect those. All right, and there you go. And again, you can see that this is the same shape. It's just been moved to the right to and down to. So once again, the lines don't matter here. All that matters is that we're looking at those points and we're translating each of them two to the right and five down. Now, one final thing you'll want to remember with these, okay, is when you graph these, these are points on a graph, all right? Now, uh, what you'll want to do, and if you want credit on the test, this is what you will do, okay? You're just going to label each of these. Now, we knew to start out what, what to start out with what J, K, and L were, so let's go and write those in. Uh, but then what we need to do is show what these points are, the L prime, J prime, and K prime are. So let's go ahead and write those in. All right, so there you go. J prime was negative 1, negative 1. K prime is 3, negative 2. And L prime is negative 2, negative 4. So there you go. Uh, this is what the answer would look like. So first asked us to graph the original and then we graphed also the image of the pre-image, which is the original. All right, go ahead and take a few seconds and give this one a shot, and then we'll go over it. All right, so I'm going to start this out by graphing A, which is at 4, negative 3. So I go to the right 4 and down 3. So this is A, which is at 4, negative 3. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what it wants or how it wants it to be translated. And it tells us we need to take it 4 units to the left. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4 units to the left. So it'll be on the y-axis and then three units up. So I've got to go up one, two, three. It looks like that's going to put us at the origin, okay? So this is our A prime, which is at the origin, zero, zero. All right, let's go ahead and look at B now. B is at zero, two, so zero to the right or left. We'll go up two, so this is our B point. All right, and it's at zero, two. And it's going to translate 4 to the left, so 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, and 3 units up, 1, 2, 3. So this will be our B prime, <coughs> which is the coordinate pair. Looks like it's negative 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, okay? All right, point C is at 5, 1, which is right here. So we've got uh, point C at 5, 1. And it's going to translate 4 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 3 up, 1, 2, 3. So this is the image of C, which is C prime at 1 and 4. So now that I've got these points labeled, and uh, I can see the difference between each point. All I need to do is connect the pre-image points to the other pre-image points and the image points to themselves as well. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start with these two. Then we'll connect these two. And finally, these two. Okay, so there's our pre-image, and then I'm just going con to connect the other ones, okay, so here's A prime to B prime, and here's A prime to C prime, and also 
we'll connect C prime to B prime, okay? And there you go. You can see that those two triangles, they are the same triangle. It's just that they're moved. And we have that pre-image triangle, and we've moved it into that image triangle. Also, and it does say this, we've written the coordinates of the image, okay? And also the pre-image. All right, let's look at this example, all right? So notice in this example that it doesn't give us a graph. And as it turns out, we don't even need one, all right? Let's look at how this works. And some of you may have noticed this already. If we translate it two to the left, all we're doing is taking each x value, and we're, in this case, since it's two to the left, we would move it back two. So we're subtracting two from each of the x values. On the other hand, we're also going to be taking the y values, and it looks like we're moving it one unit up, which means we're going to be adding one to each y value, okay? So the translation here, let's look. So I'm going to go ahead and write this in, all right? I'm going to subtract two and then add one here. Now I'm just gonna fill in the, the x value, which is negative one, and the y value, which is negative two. This will give me my image point of x prime. And you can see negative 1 minus 2 right here is going to give me a negative 3. And in this case, I've got negative 2 plus 1, which gives me negative 1. Okay, and I can do this with the other two points. All right, so in this second point, you can see I've got 6 minus 2 and negative 3 plus 1. And then will give me y prime, which would be 4, and negative 2. And this next point will be z prime. And let's look. We've got 2 minus 2, which is 0. And also negative 5 plus 1, which is negative 4. So what this does is it gives us the vertices of triangle x prime, y prime, z prime. And if we wanted to, we could graph those very easily. Uh, but what I want you to do is think about which one you prefer. If you prefer to find your points on a graph, then use a graph. Okay, if it tells you to graph, then you'll have to graph it anyways. But in this case, where it's just asked for us to find the vertices, if you want a graph, that's fine. But if you want to do it this way with some simple algebra here, then use that as well, okay? But our answer here is good, and we've written these three down. These three would be our answer right here. Because, again, all it asks for, what is the vertices? Uh, that's the corners of the triangle, if, if you didn't understand that, all right? Just real quick, uh, this is something you're going to want to understand. It's this right here, okay? This is what we call translation notation. This is going to come up in some of the other questions, okay? It's going to want you to show, using translation notation, how you got your answer. And we'll look at one of those examples. All right, so in this example, if point A was at 1, 5, and we're going to translate this to point B, so let's look first. We're moving this from 1, 5 to point B, which was to 1, all right? So a translation notation, let's go ahead and look at that. So we're going to make this large so that we have enough space to write. We'll start with the x value and then the y value, okay? So all we got to do is look at the change from A, which is the top one, A, to B, which is the image of A, okay? So we can see 
the change is in x, it looks like it went up 1. So we would write that here, it went up 1. From 5 to 1, however, it went down 4, so we would write that number right here. And we're done. This is the translation notation for this translation.